cultures all have different kinds of arts and crafts. Oh, so uh, last time when I went to Nepal, I bought this thing, a uh, string art from Nepal. Very interesting, is it? And as you can see here, when I went to China, I bought this marble ancient Chinese elephant. Yeah, so it's kind of like so historical. <laughs> Okay. And uh, over here, like my friend just came back from India and got me this souvenir. As you can see, it's like an owl, oh, and an owl day. inside the owl. Ooh. 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 Hey, Alif, what kind of you're Malay? What kind of arts and crafts do the Islams have back then? I <laughs> should should I know? Any of you guys know? I no, don't. I don't know. know. No one knows. No. no. Guys, do you guys want to go on a trip and find out what kind of arts and crafts that ancient Islam's had? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Let's hey, go! Let's go! The regions of Islam architecture we will be covering in this video comprises of Islam in Central Asia, Islam from Abbasid Caliphate, the Ottoman Empire, Islam from Malaysia, Islam in Europe, and Islam in India. And now, without further ado, let's move on to the presentation. We wanted to go somewhere where we could learn about all the different types of designs and arts that ancient Islam's had. While this includes many aspects of art, we decided to focus it down to just Muslim architecture because covering all the different types of arts would be too much for just one video. However, there are also different types of ancient Islam ranging from Muslims in China all the way to Muslims in the Ottoman Empire as well as Muslims in India. How could we ever possibly ever collect and phone all the different types of ancient Muslim architectures? Well, we knew there was only one place we could go that could hold so much information. Alright guys, where are we? We're at Islamic Islam Art Museum, Museum Malaysia! Malaysia. Oh! Wow, what a shiny roof! This must be a recent building because there's no way they could have built this in ancient times. Actually, this building was built in the 7th century, meaning that this building, called the Dome of the Rock, is 14 centuries old. It can be found in Jerusalem, where they still shine brightly over its people. It's the oldest Islamic structure to have survived in its original form. It was built during the reign of the Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik bin Marwan, and both its interior and exteriors are covered with Quranic verse describing paradise. And yes, I know what you're thinking, and yes, the dome is solid gold. In fact, in 1993, King Hussein of Jordan even donated 80 kilograms of pure gold to Jerusalem to refurbish its dome. Every year, millions of Muslims make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and the Dome of the Rock is one of the must-see places there. Wow, this building is so pretty. Are the walls made of blue glass tiles? Actually, yes they are. What you're looking at is the sacred mosque, the holiest site in all of Islam. Situated in the holy city of Mecca, the sacred mosque is the direction towards which all Muslims face to perform their daily prayers. It's also the site where millions upon millions of Muslim pilgrims travel to as part of their holy Kaaba during the Hajj season. It is also the only mosque in the world which does not have a Qibla wall or mira. Being built in the 7th century AD as well, it's the second oldest building in Islam, only because it's been renovated and refurbished so many times. Whoa, it's just the Taj Mahal. No, you idiot. That's the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque complex of Abu Dhabi, built in 1543 AD. In its design and construction, the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque unites the world using artisans and materials from all over the world including Italy, Germany, Austria, Morocco, India, Turkey, Iran, China, the UK, New Zealand, Greece and of course the United Arab Emirates. The Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque can house up to 41,000 and it covers a huge area of 22,412 square meters. Ha! I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? Surprise, surprise, the Taj Mahal is actually the most well-known Islamic monument in India and is even one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Built in 1632 by Shah Jahan to house the body of his favourite wife, 
Mumtaz Mahal, the Taj Mahal is made of pure white marble. The lines and designs you see on its walls are all made of semi-precious gemstones pressed into the marble. And, as with most Islamic structures, the Taj Mahal is perfectly symmetrical. There are also inscriptions of Quranic verses located not only on the building, but also on the surfaces of the surrounding compound, which is also made of white marble. Now, let's move on to our reflections. The most memorable part of the trip is that I could see the uniqueness of the Islamic civilization and all the arts and crafts. I felt more devoured to Islam and enlightened after going to the museum. I've learned that there is a lot of history of Islamic arts. The trip to the Islamic Museum was very informative as I had minimal knowledge on Islam culture. For me, the most enjoyable part was the showcasing of the Islam weaponry. The intricate designs and the weapons were beautiful. Before this trip, you know, I used to think that you know, Chinese just had Chinese people, uh, Malaysian just had Malaysian Muslims and everything like that. But now I realize there were Chinese Muslims, there were Portuguese Muslims, there were Iranian Muslims, and there's so many types of Muslims. And I think that was the most enjoyable and memorable part. When my mind started opening up and I started learning and everything. I think today we learned a lot of stuff about Islamic arts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what else did we do? We want one of the last time.